Tina Bean, ZipWhip's Director of Corporate Communications, and I will be your guide throughout our first ever virtual summit. That's right, I'm not an actor. I'm just very convincingly excited about texting. And this is what you're left with when you blow your budget on t-shirts. Since you can't look around the room to see who you're joined by, let me tell you that you're virtually surrounded by more than 1,500 current and future ZipWhip users across North America. They represent industries from insurance to fitness to manufacturing with one thing in common, the desire to communicate more effectively with customers, clients, patients, donors, fans, students. You get the idea. A few quick housekeeping items before we get started. If you're interested in diving deeper into the topics we're discussing, check out the files window on the session page for additional resources and keep an eye out for keywords you can text throughout the day for even more resources. And a pro tip on that one, if you're gonna be using your ZipWhip app to text in, please make sure to turn off your signature before texting in a keyword. If you'd like to win some cash prizes simply by engaging during context, click on the game tab and start racking up those points. You've probably actually accumulated a lot of points without even realizing it. And speaking of points, check out the social wall to see what your conference attendees have posted leading up to the event. As we go along, feel free to make posts yourself and put them on your own social media feeds. But don't forget to include hashtag context 2020. We'll feature you on our social wall and give you some extra points toward a cash prize. If you're not yet a ZipWhip customer and you wanna learn more about our texting plans, text START to 430-CONTEXT for more information. That's 430-266-8398. And lastly, we know that your workday can get hectic. And even if you plan to watch today and tomorrow's sessions with undivided attention, your toddler, your work from home spouse, or a team emergency might have other plans. So if you end up missing any session or just wanna go back and look later for a refresher, the videos will be available for the next six months. All right, that should cover it for the fine print. Now, I'm really excited for you to meet our first presenter, ZipWhip's co-founder and CEO, John Lauer. You're about to discover what I did over three years ago when I first joined ZipWhip. There is no one on the planet more enthusiastic about texting than John. He'll tell you how he and ZipWhip's co-founders invented business texting, why they had so much faith in this medium, and why you should too. All right, John, take it away. All right, you guys, it is finally here. Welcome to Context. I'm John Lauer, ZipWhip's co-founder and CEO, and this is our first ever customer summit. Uh, and we couldn't be more excited to have you guys all here. You know, we've always wanted to put on a big customer conference and have you join us here in Seattle to talk about everything texting. But COVID's kind of put a dent in those in-person plans but it's also given us an opportunity to meet virtually from our homes across the country. Now, within hours of us sending out the first notice of this conference of context, we had hundreds of you reaching out and signing up to join. We didn't even expect that level of overwhelming enthusiasm that we saw, uh, but truly, we are so excited and grateful to have you all here. You know, one of our biggest assets as a company has been that our customers are so engaged in our product. Uh, we make software so that we can help businesses like yours succeed, and we wouldn't be able to do that without a customer base that's so eager to participate, to share, and to learn from each other. And wanting to learn from one another, hearing from other businesses who are using texting successfully, that's one of the repeated requests we've heard over the years. So, over the next two days, we're going to cover a lot of ground, but one of the things you'll take away for certain is how your peers are using texting to better engage their customers and to drive growth for their businesses. Uh, you're going to get to hear from customers like the Detroit Tigers from my hometown, from Tegna, who's in a whole bunch of local uh, media uh, markets across the country, and even franchises like Nine Round and Painting with a Twist, uh, while they share the ways that texting has changed their businesses. You'll also get the opportunity to connect directly with your peers in your industry during our breakout sessions. Uh, we know you're going to find a lot of value over the sessions ahead. And if you haven't already, please take a second during the break before our next session to go to our social media handles and follow us. 
This is the best place to see real-time updates from ZipWhip, everything from product enhancements to blog posts to eBooks to customer shoutouts. And yes, on that note, we love making customer shoutouts. So if you want to be featured on our social media handles, please tag us. But let's get to texting. It's only fitting to begin context at the beginning of texting for business itself. And ZipWhip literally invented business texting. You may or may not know that already, but you probably remember just 10 years ago when it was inconceivable that a business could text you or vice versa. But now today, you not only have plenty of businesses that you text with, but you actually expect having that option. Now, how did this love for texting start? Well, it started with the consumer. You know, right now there are around 300 million consumer mobile phones in America. And for decades, these 300 million consumers have communicated with one another through voice calling and through text. And that's been working fine. Families, friends, loved ones, they've had a fast and easy, intuitive way to communicate with each other. God knows I do it a lot. Uh, but over the years, I'm sure you've also noticed that voice calls have dropped and texts have risen. Just compare your call history on your phone to your text history. Which medium gets the most attention? I mean, plenty of you even in our audience today even reached adulthood before you sent your first text, but now it's probably one of your main communication channels. So those 300 million cell phones have been communicating seamlessly with one another for decades by both voice and text, and those cell phones have also had the ability to call not only mobile phones, but also to landlines. But the missing piece has been texting with the business phone numbers. Now, why was this system set up in a way that cut off such a critical communication medium between mobile lines and business lines? Now, there are more than 200 million business lines in America today. Uh, and we've always known that there was a missed opportunity for that connection between these 200 million lines and these 300 million mobile lines in the United States. Because if texting works so flawlessly between cell phones over here, and if it's universally adored and adopted, why shouldn't we extend it to landline, VoIP lines, and toll-free lines over here? You'd think that there would have been some overwhelmingly complicated factor that had, up until this point, made texting between landlines and mobile phones impossible, but we actually discovered that that wasn't actually the case. So, let's go back to 2014, when we first went to the mobile operators, and we made the case for allowing texts from business lines into their texting network. And one by one, we ended up getting contracts to enable us to interconnect with each mobile operator. But we knew that we couldn't be 100% successful until we had full connectivity between all the carriers. Which would mean that as a business, you could text any customer and know that no matter which mobile carrier they used, they'd get your text. We knew that this security and confidence and deliverability was absolutely critical to your success. So as the months went along, we made more and more progress and netted more and more carrier contracts. Now, convincing each carrier there was a future in allowing businesses to text it was a challenge. But as part of this process, I want to share a story with you that we at ZipWhip call the Velveeta Cheese Incident. Now, in February of 2014, we flew to Kansas City to meet with the execs at Sprint. In order, in order to enable texting on landline, VoIP, and toll-free phone numbers, we needed them to give us a connection. So me and my two co-founders went to the grocery store the night before the meeting and bought a bunch of bricks of Velveeta cheese. The next morning, we walk into the meeting, and I hand each Sprint executive a brick of Velveeta, and the looks of confusion on their faces were priceless, uh, although not unexpected. I said to him, hey, it's the Super Bowl this week, so I thought I'd bring you all some Velveeta for your Super Bowl parties. They continued to stare at me in confusion until I said, hey, look on the back of the box. There's a toll-free number there. Why the heck can't I text that number? And they kind of looked at me and said, yeah, that's a good point. Why can't you text it? Huh. Uh, and I explained that in order to open up texting to any toll-free line, we needed all the carriers, Sprint included, to give us routing into their network. Now, it seems like a funny and oddly simple way to win a deal, but it worked. They gave us a contract. And after that, we needed only one more carrier, AT&T. 
I won't get into the nitty gritty, but eventually we did land that contract as well. And we finally could begin text enabling any business phone number in the country. So by the end of 2014, we had officially text enabled the very first business landline in America. And today we've enabled millions. You know, looking back, it probably seems like a big gamble. I mean, if this was such a smart idea, then why hadn't anybody else done it before? You know, I've been an entrepreneur since I was in middle school when I started a lawn mowing business in my neighborhood in the suburbs of Detroit. And while my experience as a young entrepreneur doesn't mean I'll always have the right answers, I have been lucky to have some great successes. Uh, during the dot-com boom, I started my first real company. It was called Root Level. Uh, we built the very first websites for companies like Ford and GM. Made sense. We were in Detroit. And then I started another company. Uh, it became one of the industry's first text messaging aggregators for short codes. This was back when Twitter didn't even operate on an app or on the web, but by text message. And we actually gave Twitter their first short code. That enabled Twitter to become what it is today. Now, these business ideas were pretty risky, of course, but as an entrepreneur, like many of you, you need to have a strong sense of what is and what isn't a good business bet. And we knew texting was a good business bet for these reasons. Texting is an open ecosystem. It's fully ubiquitous. It comes automatically on every phone. It's simple and intuitive. And all of these add up to texting having staying power and standing the test of time, which is a critical foundation to have for any startup business. Let's dig into that. What the heck do I mean by an open versus a closed ecosystem? Now, an open ecosystem is something like voice calling or email. All you need to know is someone's phone number or their email address, and you can use those channels to reach someone. And no one company owns that ecosystem. It's a mixture of companies coming in and accessing the technology. Accessing the technology as a business or as a user is incredibly simple. A closed ecosystem is different. These are apps like Facebook Messenger, Twitter, WeChat, etc. And the only way to send a message to someone on Facebook is by using Facebook yourself, and Facebook is the only operator of that technology. There are multiple layers of complexity with closed ecosystems. First, these apps might have good usage across the country, but none of them will have 100% usage. Even if you think a lot of your customers may use one of these apps, it's nowhere close to 100%. And then how do you know which customers use it and which ones don't? Then let's say you know your customer is on one of these apps. How do you find them on the app? You can only search them by name and that'll pull up countless options. The next complexity is that instead of being able to reach all of your customers on one open ecosystem, you now have to reach some customers on one closed system and other customers on a completely different closed system. That's a lot of channels to monitor. You also have to ask questions about the structure of the company that provides the app. Do they get most of the revenue from selling advertisements? What implications does that have on their messaging product? Does that mean your data may be indexed and even sold? These factors make closed ecosystems like social media apps a risky bet for your long-term communication strategy. But in open ecosystems like phone calls, email, and texting, there's actually a natural system of checks and balances. The technology improves over time and it's, in, it's transparent to others in the ecosystem. Okay, so the open ecosystem that texting fosters has enabled it to become completely ubiquitous worldwide. Today, it is on every handset around the globe, no matter the country or type of phone. And texting is the only communication medium that's achieved 100% ubiquity. Think about how powerful it is. 14 billion mobile phones around the world, and every single one of them can connect with each other through SMS. Even email doesn't have that universality worldwide. Texting has even expanded beyond just mobile handsets and become integrated into other tools we use every day. You can say, hey Google, or hey Siri, send a text. Or you could use voice command over CarPlay and originate outbound SMS messages hands-free. If you try to send a WhatsApp using voice command in your car, it's not gonna work, but you can send a text. 
Not only is texting ubiquitous in the sense that every phone can enable it, but it comes automatic. No matter what type of phone you get, think of the apps that come preloaded on the phone. More than that, think of the ones that come preloaded on the first screen. Voice calling, a contacts app, and always a native texting app. But WhatsApp, TikTok, your company's custom designed app, if you want to reach your customers using these channels, you first need them to download and start using those apps. Getting a response from your customer is complicated enough to begin with, without the additional step of requiring them to download new tools. You're setting yourself up for failure if your communication strategy relies on your customers changing their behavior and using a tool they don't already. But texting comes native and automatically on everyone's phones. There's no customer friction or changes in behavior required. The last critical piece that told us texting was a good bet, it's simple and intuitive. You know that your customers automatically have texting on their phone, and this capability is ubiquitous worldwide. So the next question is whether or not they know how to text. Well, at this point, that actually feels like a silly question. You know, without a doubt, your customers know how to text. It works the same on every phone in every part of the world. You can instantly start using it to communicate with your customers. There's no training required. If you send a text, you know they're able to send a reply. These core values, that texting is an open ecosystem, it's ubiquitous, it comes automatically, and it's easy to use, these values signaled to us early on that texting was a communication medium here to stay. And that matters for your business. You can't go chasing around the latest and greatest app or fad. You need to invest your money in smart, limited places. Well, we knew that texting was a good bet, and now you all know that too. Unlike other mediums, texting only increases in usage over time. Even though, in its 20 years, it's seen almost zero innovation or advancement whatsoever. Other messaging apps have tried to take its place, but they've come and gone. By this point, you've probably even forgotten some of the attempts at new messaging systems, like BlackBerry Messenger, MSN Messenger, Yahoo Messenger. These apps have waxed and waned for the reasons we were just talking about. They're closed ecosystems. They don't come automatically on users' phones. They're not ubiquitous and used by everyone. And they're not even necessarily simple and intuitive to use. But texting hasn't changed or added unnecessary complexity. Think of a messaging tool like Slack or Skype. These have advanced features that can add value, but can also erode the core effectiveness of the tool. For example, the away feature of an app like this is good in that you can signal to coworkers that you aren't there to return a message. But over time, I'm sure you've noticed, like I have, that the trend becomes that more and more people leave their statuses to away so they're not bothered with messages. Texting, on the other hand, has remained simple with no frills. Now, there's some good and bad with that, and James Lappick, ZipWhip CTO, and one of our co-founders will go into why there is a need for upgrade to texting at this point and how it'll benefit your business. But in general, the fact that texting has remained simple is one of its reasons for success. One of the other keys to texting success over the long term is that it's gained adoption among every generation. It's not just a new shiny tool for millennials or Gen Zers. Every generation is texting and making it their preferred form of communication. In fact, we did a study at ZipWhip and we found that 64% of baby boomers wish more businesses would use texting to communicate with them. And 61% of boomers check their phone notifications one to three times per hour. Communication tools like social media, on the other hand, hit different generations at different times. I mean, have any of you noticed, for example, that a decade ago, Facebook was the most popular app among younger people? You know, people in their late teens and 20s? Well, now who do you mostly see on your Facebook feed? People my age. And where have the teenagers and 20-year-olds gone? To TikTok. Social media apps are fickle, and their usage trends are similar to fashion trends. They're in one season and out the next. Texting, though? Texting is a utility at this point. It's like water or electricity. It's incredibly stable. You can bet on it. What else achieves utility status? What other app? What other communication medium? You can't be in the business of chasing trends. 
That's why texting stability is so powerful. So if texting has reached utility status and it's universally adopted and adored, what about phone calls? Voice calling has many of the benefits we just talked about. It's an open ecosystem, it comes automatically on every mobile phone, it's ubiquitous around the world, it's simple and intuitive. So doesn't that mean your customers also want to talk on the phone? Not really, no. Phone calls are inherently different in a bunch of obvious ways. We've long felt it, but now we can confirm with data that people just don't want to talk on the phone, especially to businesses. Our study found that 96% of consumers find phone calls to be disruptive. Why? Because when someone calls you, you're effectively held captive. You need to be there right when the other person wants to talk, and you need to give them your full, undivided attention. Multitasking is nearly impossible, and you certainly can't answer the phone when you're in a meeting or already in another conversation. Phone calls are incredibly demanding of people's time and attention, and frankly, it's not very respectful to your customers to expect that they'd be ready to answer your call at the drop of a hat. But beyond the risk of interrupting or irritating your customers by calling, did you know that you also might be making them literally anxious? 77% of consumers said they experience anxiety when talking on the phone. I've seen this firsthand in my own home, uh, and maybe some of you have too. My 14-year-old daughter refuses to call and order pizza because she's too afraid to talk on the phone. There are a few explanations for this anxiety. First, consider the fact that many grown adults today were raised without a landline at home. With the emergence of texting and mobile phones 20 years ago, many people found there was rarely a need to make a phone call. If you think about it, learning how to talk on the phone is actually a skill set in itself, and it's one that entire generations haven't learned. Uh, and even people who grew up with landlines can be out of practice on how to have a phone conversation, particularly with someone other than friends or family. One of the other causes of anxiety is that you have zero ability to prepare what you'll say or edit the conversation. With texting or email, you have a moment to think about your response, but there's more pressure on a phone call. You also don't know when you'll be able to get off the phone, and it can feel uncomfortable or rude to try to hang up when you know that the other person wants to continue the conversation. Not to mention that the call quality itself might make the conversation stilted and awkward. What if the other person keeps cutting in and out, or there's a noticeable lag? For people out of the habit, of which there are many, these factors all combine to create real anxiety when someone calls. So what's the result? 87% of people say they reject or ignore calls from businesses and unknown numbers. I know I do. If consumers barely answer the phone for friends and family these days, what makes you think they'll do it for a business? They won't. So consumers don't like phone calls. Well, what makes them love texting? It's non-invasive. They can do it on their own timeline. They can multitask. They can prepare what they're going to say. It's quick and easy. It's how they communicate with family and friends. And they don't need to download a new app. Downloading an app isn't difficult, but that doesn't mean your customers are willing to do it. You know one of our customers spent $7 million on a custom app to communicate with their customers? And after launching it, only 7% of their customers downloaded the app to begin with. And then only 15% of those customers even logged in. They turned to texting and saw immediately positive results in engagement. I mean, imagine if every time you met a new person, you needed to download an app to communicate with them. That'd be crazy, right? That's kind of what you're doing as a business if you're asking your customers to download your app to communicate with you. We all have a perfectly good communication app sitting here on our phones ready to go, and we know that everyone can use the same one. Texting also has what I like to call presumed presence. It's this wonderful combination where it's not invasive, but it also feels in a way like the person you're, you're texting with is standing right next to you. You know they're going to see your message either immediately or very soon. And it strikes that delicate balance between being non-disruptive, but also guaranteed to be seen. We've all entered a social contract around texting, and the rules make sense intuitively. For instance, don't text at odd hours. Don't text someone repeatedly before giving them a chance to respond. Keep it short and sweet, and don't abuse their time. But the rules around phone calls have changed. Now the rule from consumers is simply, please don't. Consumers have been saying for years that they want businesses to adopt the same medium that they use in their daily conversations with family and friends. 
In fact, your customers have probably been trying to text you all along. Many of our customers, probably many of you, found that when you signed up with ZipWhip and enabled texting, you immediately started getting inbound messages from your customers before even advertising the capability. Take a look at this example from Florida State. A sales rep had been trying to get a hold of a customer by phone and wasn't able to reach them. They enabled ZipWhip and immediately got a text from the customer, who didn't even know they'd just gotten texting. This is not an isolated anecdote. We hear stories like this all the time. The sad reality is that hundreds of millions of texts are sent every day to business numbers, and these messages are disappearing into the ether, never reaching their intended businesses. This sends a really negative signal to your customers. I mean, imagine if your phone line was off the hook and you didn't realize that your customers have been trying to call you. Or imagine that your business address was listed incorrectly in Google, so customers have been showing up to the wrong place. Customers all over the country are actually reaching out to businesses which is a level of engagement that can be hard to achieve. And those conversations are going nowhere because the business hasn't set up texting yet. Imagine that experience from a consumer's end. Wouldn't you want to work with the business who actually responds to your texts? And now, businesses are catching on to consumers' preference to text. We've text-enabled more than 4 million landlines since 2014. Demand has been strong, and it's even increasing. And why do businesses love texting? Well, for many of the same reasons that consumers do, plus a few more. You know your customers are going to get the message, you get an instant response, and it's easy for your team to implement, and it's efficient. But bottom line, it's effective. I want to share just one customer anecdote that really shows how effective texting is. Baylor Healthcare System Credit Union implemented texting in their collections department in late March. In just 40 days of using ZipWhip, they lowered their total delinquency from over $900,000 to just $658,000. All in all, with the additional success they found in keeping new delinquencies low through texting, Baylor collected over $1 million in past due balances in just 24 days. Texting really can and does make a difference for businesses because it helps you reach the people you need to reach at the moment you need to reach them. We shouldn't forget that it also matters that you enable texting on your existing business phone number. You've built valuable brand equity in that number over the years, and it's the number your customers recognize. Your customers know they can text or call the same line they've always used. Many software providers give businesses the option to text, but they make you use a new and unique phone number. I was actually just speaking to one of our customers the other day who runs a car dealership. And he said that four years ago, the service they used for texting didn't enable their existing business phone number and instead used many different lines. The customers didn't recognize the phone numbers. They didn't know which one to reach out to or which one to call. But by implementing ZipWhip and using the same line they've always advertised, they're removing the guesswork for their customers. And what's driving the increased demand for texting right now? Well, it's COVID. Texting has given people a safe way to communicate person to person. 56% of people are using their mobile devices more than before COVID began. And 38% of people are getting more news and alerts via text. This consumer reliance on texting means businesses have had to digitally transform overnight. All of a sudden, in-person purchases were out the window, and businesses have had to consider how to reach customers in new ways. As a result, Texting on our network has actually skyrocketed. The number of businesses signing up has also jumped. There are some particularly relevant use cases that have emerged since COVID began. Rescheduling appointments based on priority and need was crucial at the height of the pandemic, and it will continue to be. If you need to reach someone to change their appointment time, the most surefire way to do that is through texting. Texting is also the best way to inform customers of new safety procedures both for their peace of mind and for their knowledge of new requirements and expectations. Here again, if you truly need someone to see your message, you know that texting is the best way to communicate it. But beyond just surviving during the pandemic, businesses have needed to find new ways to bring in revenue. Texting has opened up a new channel to inform customers of revised services. And when in-person purchases are no longer an option, Texting can become your main way of accepting payments. Not only can you let your customers know of promotions and special offers, but you can actually request and accept payments via text. Later on during context, you'll hear from our partners at Authvia. 
They've helped us enable seamless mobile payments. The only thing your customer needs in order to send a payment is to text you the last four digits of their phone number. It literally could not be easier. These are not abstract use cases. Organizations like the University of Washington Medical System have been using ZipWhip to send critical appointment scheduling alerts to patients. Grocery stores have started using texting to facilitate contactless order pickups. At the start of COVID, we also began offering our services for free to nonprofits working through the pandemic. So nonprofits like Family First Renton have used texting to enable food deliveries to families in need. Organizations like Chrysalis and the U.S. Civilian Corps have used texting to help jobless Americans find new work. The state of Alaska has used ZipWhip to gather critical data from residents on how they're faring through the pandemic and how the state health department can better serve them. Look, you know better than anyone the power that texting has for your business. And one of the things we've learned over the years is that the best way to make the case for texting is to let our customers tell their own stories. So I'm excited for you to hear from some of them today and tomorrow. Even businesses who aren't in your industry or who don't use texting the same way will have learnings to share. You'll also get a chance to learn more about the people behind ZipWeb. We're a team of about 250 people, mostly based out of Seattle. And I am incredibly proud of this team, and I always have been. They come to work every day, even if in COVID times that means virtually. And they work hard to give you the best texting platform in the industry. I can't wait for you to meet them. So thank you to the team who put Context together. It's our first customer conference, and it's an incredibly ambitious effort. And I also want to thank all of you for joining us and for being customers, partners, and supporters. Our product philosophy revolves around our customers and putting your needs at the center. Through events like Context and our regular feedback surveys and our insiders community, we hope to gain more insight into how you want us to evolve our product in the future. So we appreciate your feedback and your participation, and please know that we don't take it for granted. So with that, let's get started with ZipWhip's first ever customer summit, Context 2020.